Did you know there are over 300 companies selling e-bikes in the US? We are spoiled for choice and it can be overwhelming. Since 2021, I've explored hundreds of e-bikes and produced detailed reviews on more than I can count. I've learned how e-bikes are manufactured at factories, sat down for extended interviews with CEOs and policymakers, learned about retail and service with many e-bikes, and ridden e-bikes all over the USA with hundreds of viewers on our Go Electric group rides. My personal insight combined with everything I've learned from viewers in person and in the comments section have helped me to develop a strong sense for what constitutes a competitive e-bike. In fact, several of the leading manufacturers told me they've made improvements to their e-bikes and helmets based on my critiques. Now I'm putting the experience to work, making sense of it all for you with this Go Electric e-bike buying guide. I'll show you how to identify the best e-bike for your needs and budget. We'll talk about the major players as well as brands and styles you may not have discovered on your own. Welcome to the Go Electric e-bike buying guide series. Hey everyone, Miss Go Electric here. In this episode of the Go Electric e-bike buying guide, I wanna talk about cargo e-bikes. Now, I have a lot of people ask me about cargo e-bikes because they have families and they wanna be able to put their kids on the back of the bike before they're old enough to be able to safely ride alongside them on their own bike. And families are a good application for a cargo e-bike, but they're also commonly used for delivery drivers and working out on the farm because they are the workhorse of the e-bike world. But you don't have to just use them for work. You can also use them for play. They're really great for being able to go down to the beach or go hunting or even camping. In this episode, we're gonna look at different makes and models and the characteristics that I look out for in a cargo e-bike and what you can expect at each variation of price point. Let's start with the Electric Expedition. Electric is one of the largest e-bike manufacturers in the US and they are known for making affordable, basic, quality e-bikes. And I would actually say that they're probably the most responsible for driving the prices down amongst all e-bikes in the industry. But this here is the Electric Expedition and it's their take on a cargo e-bike. So let's talk about the characteristics that I like in particular about this bike. The Electric Expedition starts around $1,400 and like most other cargo e-bikes, it has a very robust frame, but this one is unique because it's probably the biggest payload capacity that I have experienced and reviewed for a cargo e-bike. And that's because this can support up to 300 pounds just on the rear of the bike here. And the rider actually can be up to 330 pounds, giving this a total maximum payload capacity for the whole bike of 450 pounds, which is very impressive. Payload is very important with the cargo e-bike, but so is rider height adaptability. And this is nearly as good as it gets because this supports riders from 4'11 up to 6'5". This seat post can come all the way up. It's probably the highest I've ever seen a seat post ever come. And the stem here is adjustable to come more towards the rider as well. We've talked about the frame, but now let's talk about the power that it takes in order to haul the load that you're carrying with you. This has a 750 watt rear hub motor, which is equivalent to one horsepower, but it peaks at 1300 watts. So this should be sufficient enough to be able to take your cargo up a hill and hit those speeds of 20 miles per hour. With a powerful motor like that and hauling the 450 pound maximum payload capacity of this bike, you're gonna expend a lot of energy. And Electric actually offers a dual battery setup with this bike. And that is gonna be a little bit more money, maybe around 16 to $1,700, but it will allow you to get up to about 100 miles of range. Cargo e-bikes tend to be a little bit bigger, and so I like when companies tend to think about how these are gonna be able to store, and Electric has done a good job of that because they have added this foldable stem here, so all you have to do is push down, and the pedals actually pop right off with a quick release, which is nice and easy when you wanna put it in storage or in a bike rack, and then the seat post comes right off. So as you can see, it stays pretty low and you can store it in a compact fashion in comparison to a full-size cargo e-bike. Something I'm looking for on all cargo e-bikes is powerful brakes. These are hydraulics and that's what I tend to look out for with a minimum of 180 millimeter rotors. So that's a check for this one. Another thing I like to look out for is integrated headlights and taillights, which this has that. But I also like to see an electric horn 
and turn signals, which this does not have at this price point. We talked a lot about the attributes of this bike, but to really make a cargo e-bike work for you in the use case that you're gonna be utilizing it, you really wanna look into accessories. And Electric is a brand that offers a really wide variety. And actually in some cases when they're selling this bike online, they offer bundle packs to include a bunch of accessories with it. So some of the common ones you will see is maybe a front or rear basket. Some also include the handrails for the kids to be able to sit in the back or a soft seat pad back here. And they also offer some more unique ones. And you'll notice on the back of this rack, there are actually two YEP windows. And YEP allows for two child seats to get back here and to be able to take those kids with you comfortably, almost in like a car seat and strapping them in. And the side of this cargo bike also has something I wanna point out, which is these protective shields. Now, all the cargo bikes that I have reviewed come with this, and that is to protect maybe those kids' feet that are dangling down in the yep seats or any other kind of debris and just protecting anyone from that area. I tend to find that the most useful item for me is a pannier bag because I can take a lot of cargo with me and stuff it in those bags, keep them protected and weatherproof. So we talked about what you can expect from electric between the $1,400 to $2,000 price range. But as I mentioned before, they are famous for making basic bikes. And that is the case in the Expedition. You see that the welds are a little bit crude. You can see the cables running all down here and the batteries are visible on the back instead of being integrated into the frame. So this is just a very utilitarian design. But if you want something a little bit more refined, let's talk about the next bike, which is the Aventon Abound. The event in a bound starts at about $1,800. So in comparison to the electric, this actually has some more standard features. And I would say that the level of refinement is much higher. As you can see, this paint job is very nice. The design of the frame is very stylish and the battery is integrated into the frame. So you don't see it visibly on the outside. And as you've noticed, and I've talked about, this has some standard features. So there's a waterproof bag that is attached to the frame right underneath the seat post. And this also comes with running boards in the back. So like the electric, this has an integrated headlight and a tail light. But as I mentioned, I like to see turn signals and an electric horn. This one does have turn signals, but it does not have a horn. Now the Electrix computer is pretty basic with its information and what you can do with it, but the event in one here has a full color screen and it's also compatible with an app. And the app will allow you to not only connect up with your bike to see the status of like your battery or change your different pedal assist modes or even the top speed, but it also allows you to engage with the community on the event and app and record your rides and things like that. Like the electric, this supports a wide variety of rider heights. So you can go from 4'11 to about six foot three. And that's thanks to a couple of things. First, this has a dropper seat post, so it's really convenient and easy for you to move the seat up and down. And this also has an extendable handlebar. So you can move this up that's easier for taller riders or move it all the way down. This also folds compactly so you can unlatch this handlebar and fold it down and take the seat post off and also have a very low bike to store in your garage or anywhere that you need it to be compact. Like the electric, the event in a bound has a maximum payload capacity of 440 pounds. So it's very close to that 450 that we saw over there, but on the rear rack, it can support less than half of the weight of the electric. So that was 300 pounds. This one here is 143 pounds. Now that rear rack capacity is definitely a disadvantage, but where there is a huge advantage with the event and abound is when it comes to the torque sensor. So the electric expedition that we talked about has a cadence sensor, which is really something to look out for when you're talking about cargo bikes, because if you're carrying a lot of load or a precious load, you wanna be able to have predictable power. And with a cadence sensor, it tends to lurch when you start to pedal. And it's also delayed when you release and you let off the power and it cuts off. 
So having predictable power is definitely something that a torque sensor provides because it's more of a natural riding feel and it's determining how hard you're pushing on the pedal to get more power and it's much smoother. So very predictable in this case. Speaking of smoothness, the electric expedition had a rigid front fork. So you feel all that vibration and bumps through the handlebars. Whereas the Event and Abound has a front suspension fork that has 50 millimeters of travel to smooth all that out. Just like the electric brand, the Aventum brand has a ton of different accessories, wide variety, but also really premium, not only in the feel, but also the look. And you can really make the bike work as you need it to in the use case that you're looking for in that case. But it's not all sunshine and roses. There is one thing that I really liked about the electric bike, and that is the fact that it has the ability to put two e-bike batteries on it instead of having to carry an extra one with you. So with the Aventon, it just has the one integrated into the frame. But keep in mind, Aventon does run some promotions sometimes where they offer an extra battery for you. You just have to be able to haul it with you, whether it's in one of your racks or a pannier bag. Now, I think that the event in Abound is probably going to check most boxes for most people, but there are some other cargo e-bikes that some people might not have considered yet, so let's take a look at those. This here is the Velatric Packer 1, and Velatric is a brand that maybe you might not have heard of because they don't have as high of volume sales as, say, Aventon or Electric or even Rad Power Bikes, but they are increasing their popularity and expanding to wide retail service availability. And when you want to look out for a cargo e-bike, you might see some cheaper options on the market, but I think one thing to consider and that is very important to look out for is certifications. You don't want to cut corners as far as having whether it's UL certifications for the bike and in this case Velatric actually has not only the basic certification for UL which is 2849 for e-bikes but they also include the battery certification for UL which is 2271 and I look out for those certifications because it is the highest level of assurance when it comes to fire safety. Another certification I look out for is IPX rating and the minimum I look for is IPX6. Some brands even offer IPX7 like Velatric here, which means that basically you can take the battery and submerge it in water and it's waterproof. Now this is important because you wanna be able to ride in rain or if your bike is sitting out in the rain when you're storing it or if it's on the back of your car or an RV while you're traveling and it rains, you wanna be able to ensure that it's gonna be protected so that when you go out and ride again it's still gonna work. The Packer one starts at about $2,000 and one big difference between this bike versus the others we've talked about is that the Packer one has a full-sized wheel of 26 inches in diameter in comparison to the electric and the event in which were 20 inches. Now a full-size wheel like this is going to provide you more stability when you're going over different types of terrain but also it can be more stable at higher speeds and the Velatric actually can go up to 25 miles per hour. Like the Aventon, the Packer 1 comes with a front suspension and it also comes with storage that is mounted onto the frame. But one thing that's unique about this in comparison to the Aventon is that this has locking storage. So this is nice and safe even when you leave your bike. Now this bike has a bigger frame and it can accommodate riders between 5'3 and 6'6". Six really good for those taller riders. Now when comparing it with the other bikes, this does have the integrated headlight and tail light. It does not have any turn signals, but it does have a bell, so at least there's some way you can notify people when you're around or approaching. Like the Electric Expedition, the Packer 1 has a cadence sensor, which is not as smooth and it is not as efficient as the torque sensor that's in the Event and Abound. Now the Packer 1 is already a bigger bike with a bigger front wheel, so it's already less efficient in that regard, but then when you compound it with the cadence sensor and it being less efficient, then you're going to get less range out of the same capacity of battery. Like the Aventon, the battery is integrated in the frame, so it looks really beautiful and very refined in that regard, but there is no spot for a second battery like the electric had. And that is something you might wanna take into consideration because then you'd have to carry an extra battery if you do wanna go further. But keep in mind, when you have a full load, you'll probably be able to get maybe 20 or 30 miles. 
Now the Velatric Packer 1 does not have any app support, but it does have the ability to use Apple Find My. So you can connect up, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, your device with this bike, and you'll be able to location track it, which the other two bikes that we talked about did not have. The Velatric Packer 1 is a good full-size cargo e-bike option, but another one that I want to talk about today is the Flyer Via. A few years ago, Radio Flyer launched an e-bike brand which extended their offering of family-oriented e-bikes and scooters. The Flyer Via is a full-sized cargo e-bike similar to the Velatric Packer 1 with a 26-inch diameter front wheel, but this e-bike has a torque sensor like the Event and Abound. This bike starts at $2,199 and its strengths include exceptional accessories which maximize utility. I'm particularly fond of the kid and cargo hauler accessory which can be equipped with a hood to keep children and items out of the elements. It comes in three frame sizes which can accommodate the widest range of rider heights among all the e-bikes I have reviewed with a range between 4 foot 10 to 6 foot 10. Flyer added app compatibility allowing riders to connect to the e-bike in order to customize features like pedal assist modes and it supports maps. The Via also has integrated lights in the front and rear as well as turn signals and a bell. Next up, we're going to talk about an overlooked e-mobility solution to get hauling done. I know this is not a cargo e-bike, but this here is the Rad Trike by Rad Power Bikes. And I wanna tell you why I wanna include this in this category. I have talked to many riders where they end up getting a cargo e-bike and they put their kids on the back rack and their shifting weight is a lot to manage, especially when you consider if there are two kids on the back that way more than what the rider is themselves that's driving the bike. So that might be challenging to maneuver. And the fact that with up to a maximum payload capacity of 450 pounds, that's just a lot of weight to be able to maneuver around. So a trike might be a better option because of the stability that it offers. The Rad Trike starts at about $1,600 and it has a payload capacity of 415 pounds, but that doesn't support any passengers like the other bikes that we've seen. The way you would want to bring passengers with you is with a trailer attachment here. So you would have to buy that additional accessory. This trailer is not made for carrying children, but you can buy one of those. And to be fair, you can put a trailer like this on any of the other bikes that we talked about, but you're not gonna get that added stability of a trike. Now, let me tell you some of the things that I really like about a trike and this one in particular is that for one, it supports a wide variety of rider heights like we saw on the other bikes, but this one, the extension is between 4'11 to 6'4. And it also has one of the lowest step over heights on any of the bikes that we've seen. And it's really easy to get on for all types of riders. And the positioning as far as when you're sitting down is very comfortable. It comes with a much wider saddle with a seat back. And the positioning of the handlebars can be twisted back towards the rider as well. So it feels a little bit more like you're on a cruiser. A couple things I don't love about the Rad Trike is that it is a very utilitarian design and they just slapped a battery on here. So it doesn't look very aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. And it also has a mechanical brake for the front wheel and coaster brakes for the rear wheels. This also, is a limited at a top speed of 14 miles per hour. Like Electric and Aventon, Rad Power Bikes is one of the big volume e-bike manufacturers in the United States. So they have a great wide variety of dealers that support their network. And they also have a really wide variety of accessories for the trike. Now let's take a look at another unconventional cargo bike option. Now we talked a lot about hauling kids and cargo on some of these other e-bikes, but what if you want to bring a full-size adult passenger with you and or have the ability to bring four big grocery bags and keep them locked and stored in waterproof casing? Well, that's what this bike can do. This here is the Civilized Cycles Model 1. The Civilized Cycles Model 1 starts at about $5,000 and it really prioritizes style and comfort. Now, I could technically ride on the back of any of these bikes because I'm light enough to do so, but I would definitely not feel as cool as riding on the back of a bike like this. 
Not only does this include 80 millimeters of travel in the front suspension, but it also has some secret sauce back here. In the rear, it includes a 60 millimeter electronic load adjusting air suspension, which has contributed to the most smooth and comfortable ride as a passenger that I've ever experienced on an e-bike. Another very unique feature about this bike is that they have these hard shell containers that are attached to it and accordion out and you can fit two full-size grocery bags in each one of these and it has a locking mechanism on the back here so you can keep your stuff safe and protected from the elements. When you're sitting on the back of this bike you have something to grab on with your legs when you pull in just like you would when you're sitting on a Vespa and that's what this bike really reminds me of. It has not only the style but also the comfort for the passenger. This is also really comfortable for the person driving the bike because the handlebars sweep back towards the rider in more like a cruiser position so you can really sit completely upright and be really comfortable as you're riding along. I mentioned that this bike is about $5,000 and one of the reasons is because this has very high quality components and it is a grade above all the others that I have talked about so far. So for example, it has Tektro Dorado hydraulic brakes with 200 millimeter rotors up front. It has Manitou suspension components on the front and for the rear suspension. It has a Sturmy Archer five speed hub transmission. And most importantly, this has a 750 watt mid drive motor, which is is going to deliver more power and be more efficient than the hub motors that we talked about in all the rest of the bikes. While the components and the performance of the Civilized Cycles Model 1 are outstanding, it's not better than all the rest of these bikes in some areas. Now this is a really big frame and it can only accommodate riders between 5 foot 6 and 6 foot 4. Plus it has limited sales and service locations because it's a small and exclusive brand. Well, I hope this video was helpful in exploring all the different features and different price points in the cargo e-bike category. If you want to learn more about each one of these bikes, I do have separate reviews that are linked down in the description below. And if you're looking for a coupon code or any more information about these bikes, you can always find that at deals.misgoelectric.com. Keep in mind, I have other episodes in this series as well that I'll put in the description. Well, thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Ride. Go electric.